Brothers and sisters, today in Gospel, we hear, of course, about the first miracle of Jesus Christ, a great miracle. Uh, but I want to uh, start uh, talking about relationship, what we know about the relationship between Jesus and Mary from today's Gospel. It's a very short conversation between these two. They have no wine. How does your concern affect me? Do whatever he tells you to do. That's it. But we can find a lot about the relationship between Mary and Jesus from this. First, we can't see Jesus' face at this moment. When we are reading this, it's first is like a Mary is asking something for Jesus for something, and the Jesus answer is very polite, but still means, no, I will not do it. And doesn't matter what Jesus say, Mary is still talking to the servers, do whatever he tells you. What do you think, why it's happened? I think, of course, and this is my imagination, that Mary read from the eyes of Jesus, from his face, that even when he said, this is not my problem, she recognized that he will help them, that he will do this. You know, I am imagining that probably it was like, a, okay, <laughs> I will do this, yeah? But you know, and this is making me start to thinking about the relationship between Mary and Jesus and Joseph, how it was. Probably so many of us are thinking about Jesus and Mary, you know, as a, in a very high level. But I don't think so that in the Nazareth, in the house of Holy Family, it was this kind of conversation. My Lord, Son of God, God of mercy, what would you like for breakfast? <laughs> and Jesus answering, Our Lady, Mother of God, Immaculate Conception, to over easy eggs. <laughs> it wasn't like this for sure. It was a normal family with normal conversations. I like how Mel Gibson in The Passion, he showed the you know, remember it was the scene when Jesus was making a table and they were sitting next to this table without chairs and Jesus was washing his hands and spurring the water on Mary. Family relationship with love. So many times when we are talking with God, with Jesus, or we are praying through the intercession of Our Lady, we should go to this kind of relationship with them, to be closer to them. I, w I don't want to say, you know, that the, all our prayers, that we are using the names of Jesus, Emmanuel, Prince of Peace, God, Almighty Father, this is wrong. No, it's not wrong. But sometimes we need a closer relationship because so many times, people will be start thinking about the God that this is someone far, far away from us. That this is God who don't even understand us. When we will start to talk with him, like with our brother, it will help us. I have a one example for this that was helped me a lot. The first time I came to United States, to learn English, I spent the six months in Washington DC with Capuchin Friars. And it was my first contact with English ever. And of course, I start to learn the prayers in English, of course, Hail Mary. But you know, my Eastern European or Central European ears, it's really bad sometimes with all this 
small difference in pronunciation in English. So it was October, we pray with the Capuchin Friars Rosary, and I start to Rosary, Hey Mary, full of grace. You know, and after, and it was like a 10, hey Mary, full of grace. And uh, the capuchins, the, the friars, they start to laugh at me that you have a better relationship with Mary than Archangel Gabriel, you know. But you know, I think sometimes, and I love to do this right now in English, just to start the uh, rosary with, hey Mary, full of grace. You know, sometimes it's really helpful to understand and to see that this normal relationship could be between us and our God. The relationship of friendship, love, not just a big faraway God from us and we small people who are afraid to raise our eyes for, to him. It has to be relationship like Mary and Jesus today in this wedding. Other thing that this gospel today is remind me, it's, you know, from missing something, something bigger could be done. Wedding, the big wedding, and a short of wine. Disaster. Can you imagine that you have a party, barbecue, and in the middle of the party you find out that you are out of wine, out of beer, out of everything. Five minutes later, all guests will, will go home. Yeah, it's, it's like, a, a, I shouldn't say this, but it's like a Jack Daniels factory in dry county. Yeah? What's going on? And this, this is a big problem. This is a big problem. Wedding, and they are short of wine. And Jesus is making a miracle. He is making something bigger from the missing. He is, from missing something, he is making something bigger, really bigger. And this has happened in our life a lot. That we are short of something, we lost something, we are missing something, and God will do something bigger for us from this. Maybe we will find out about this in heaven, that we complain all our life about to be short for something, and this really save our life. We don't know. I heard the story, uh, one priest, he said the story that one of his parishioners came to him, and he said, you know, Father, they stole my old car. Oh, so sorry. No, 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 I come to make a thanksgiving mass for the man who stole my car. Why? Because my children give me a new one. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes we are afraid to lose something. We are afraid to lose something, but when this will be happened, we will see that something bigger is coming, something better is coming. So remember, maybe in, right now in your life, you are at the moment that you are short for something, that you are missing something, that you are lost something. Be ready, because maybe God is doing this for you, to prepare you for something bigger and better. Amen.